Hi everyone, it's Anne. Welcome to my channel, Annie's Abstract Art, where I do just that. I was away for a while. I just recovered from COVID and I'm excited to be back in the studio. I love doing pieces like this that's multi-dimensional and organic. For this particular piece, I used a paper canvas that was 7x10 that I mounted on a 9x12 canvas board that I faux marbled. I love the process. I love how it turned out. I can't wait to share how I did it with you. The video will start now. Enjoy. So I am warming up the paper canvas, which is watercolor paper, 140 pound, starting with buttermilk acrylic. And then I go into it with vintage white acrylic, just kind of having uh, two shades of a light color just to break everything in. And now I start the process of laying down small pieces of copy paper. And I'm using a matte gel medium with a palette knife and I just start the composition. This is thermal paper that I used my paper rag to print. This is old book paper and I'm just trying to get some old paper, maybe a graphic in there with the Y and I'm just working around building that composition, keeping a natural frame all around even though it's going to be framed in the end against the uh, canvas board that I faux marbled. So making sure that everything is dry because that letter Y is on thermal paper and I covered it with the matte gel medium, it eventually disappears. But I'm going to show you what happens with thermal paper if that's something that you would like to try. Um, briefly, it's thermal paper, like almost like receipt paper, cash register paper, and it reacts to heat. So when you use the heat tool, it makes it black and it's very cool <laughs> if you're doing art journaling or any other kind of art that, um, that would be cool to do. So right here, you can see it in action. I didn't cover it with the gel matte medium. And it's actually a pretty good alternative to using any other black medium. And then here I had another piece that I printed out on my paper ring thermal printer and I just went around the edges. This time I didn't cover it with the gel matte medium. And here I'm adding a few squares of brown paper and I mixed um, alcohol and black acrylic um, did a very thin wash just to kind of add a little bit of black to the composition more like staining it I didn't want to go too heavy I want this piece to look fairly organic and breaking in the fibers and working around and I dry everything off camera very thoroughly. This is um, masking tape. I just wanted to get another texture in there. I laid down a few pieces and then removed some like that one right there. Less is more sometimes. This is burnt umber and this is rubbing alcohol and I am making a fresh batch just to warm up the piece. So here I have the diluted black acrylic and now the brown and this is a rubber stamp that I used black acrylic to lay down the letter Y. This is a pen cap and black acrylic and I'm just making a few circle markings with the cap, one on either side and two lower center and I love the way that looks. And I removed another piece of the masking tape. Less is more. And then I decided that the brown paper was not dimensional enough, so I added cardboard on top of each piece. And then painted it with the burnt umber and a little bit of alcohol so it wasn't too, too thick. And you can see as I 
dry it, it lightens because it's not too thick. It has the alcohol in there. And then I used an alcohol marker. I think this one is Caliart. I have Arteza and it's a yellow obviously and I just added a little bit of a color pop and then went over it with a gray that I make with cream, burnt umber and black just to kind of tone it down a little and then added some drop shadows to those elements and now I am going all around the perimeter of the piece with a sponge and vintage white. It's almost as if I was airbrushing it. I'm just tapping it with the sponge and going very lightly. I am pressing hard at some points because it's really not that much on the sponge because I want it to have that sprayed look. I'm not really looking to cover anything up. So you can see it has, it's a little distressed. And this is sea mist. It's kind of like a light turquoise acrylic and I cannot find it anywhere online or in the stores. I think I have the last bottle. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going around the edges with a water brush, kind of making it look aged or if something dripped on it. And I love it. Just, just a hint. And so now I'm adding lines with a black gel pen just for some accents, for some visual interest, both straight lines and then following some of the crevices from the papers. And now I am tearing the edges for that organic look. And when I tear it, the edges are naturally white and then when I mount it onto the canvas board that I marbled with black and brown the white really pops so it's a tedious process and I have cut out a lot but I want to show just how tedious it is it's not as simple as tearing copy paper because it's a hundred and forty pound watercolor paper. So this is a 9 by 12 canvas board and I'm starting the process of marbling. I'm going to add the burnt umber and the black which are both cut with rubbing alcohol and then I'm going to lay plastic wrap over it. So when I press into it, it kind of breaks up the paint and creates a natural marbling effect. And I realized I needed a lot more liquid to achieve that result so I doubled up and once I felt I had enough down uh, it wasn't as easy as just putting the plastic wrap back on so I just moved it around and that was fine it was actually beneficial I think because it gave me the opportunity to get different results in certain spots and as I worked it around the piece and the main focus was the frame. I wasn't as interested in the center because it was going to get covered by the art. And now it's ready. So before I mounted it onto the mat, I decided to hit each of those cardboard elements with a little bit of vintage white to kind of push it back and, and incorporate it better into the piece. So it didn't look like three pieces of cardboard was glued to the canvas. And now it is ready to be mounted. I am preparing the back of the piece with some hot glue and positioning it, pressing it down and it is done. This is how it looks in a natural setting. And here's a panned image so you can see a close up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you have any questions about my process or materials, which I've detailed below, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. And if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you will because I upload regularly. Until the next video, take care. I'll see you soon.